Good evening, everybody. It's a little late over here. It's 11.24 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But um, this is not something that can wait. This is something that I wanted to make sure gets shared with you. Um, as I'm sure that you all realize, uh, the body of Christ is going through some serious spiritual warfare right now. Spiritual warfare has kind of picked up the pace. Um, it's getting a little heavy. Uh, but we have the victory in Jesus name. We have triumph in his name. We have glory in his name. We cannot fail. He is not a God who fails. He hasn't lost a battle yet. So that being said, I want to uh, reveal to you some things that the Lord revealed to me. Um, one of them is the attacks that are coming up against us the most right now. Um, they are both spirits and curses. So there is uh, life and death in the power of the tongue. And of course, people that are on the opposite side of the fence, they like to speak death over the body of Christ. They like to speak all kinds of curses over the body of Christ. Now, although the Bible says no curse causeless shall stand if there is a cause if there is a cause, if there is an open door, if you are willfully practicing sin, if you have some sort of unforgiveness in your heart, resentment, bitterness, offense towards another human being, that curse can land. And when that curse lands, that's why we start to feel all kinds of things that um, are coming up against us. Everything from just, you know, lack of mental clarity or tired all the time or whatever it is. So I'm going to go over these things with you today. Praise the Lord um, that he reveals these things to us so that we have the upper hand against the kingdom of darkness. Um, I really feel like the Lord is going to, he's going to equip and empower and enable us to war in the spirit uh, that being said, I have a list here, and not only did he give me the names of the attacks that are coming up against us the most, but he also wanted me to write down the definition of each so that you understand what exactly these people are cursing us with and what is coming up against us. The first word is oppression. Oppression means mental pressure, distress, a feeling of being very uncomfortable and worried, the feeling of being heavily burdened mentally or physically by troubles or adverse conditions. The next word he gave me was stagnation. Stagnation means the state of not flowing or moving, lack of activity, growth or development, a failure to develop, progress, or advance, the state of being still or not moving, the quality of being or feeling sluggish. The next one is failure, an act or instance of failing, the act of failing or the state or condition resulting from having failed, a falling short. The next word was hopelessness. It means a feeling or state of despair, lack of hope, optimism, and passion. The feeling that one will not see an improvement in one's condition, a feeling of desperation. The next one is defeat. It means a failure to win or be successful. Defeated means having an unfavorable outcome. Irresponsibility. It means the failure to honor obligations and fulfill commitments to others. The character or state of being irresponsible or a lack of a sense of responsibility. This is a big one. I want you to pay attention to the wording too because it was a bit of a surprise. Distraction. Distraction means extreme agitation of the mind or emotions. A thing that prevents someone from giving their full attention to something else. In this case, the Lord our God, Jesus Christ. The state of being bored or annoyed drawing someone's attention away from something, misdirection. 
I'm also going to give you some other words that were related to distraction that I think are important to point out. One is commotion, disorder, bewilderment, amusement, which is used to distract us, agitation, confusion, disturbance, engrossment, or interference. The next one is sluggishness. Sluggishness means the fact of moving, reacting, or working more slowly than normal, usually with less energy. And I do want to also clarify something. The next four that I'm going to mention, they all work together. So starting with sluggishness, it says usually with less energy, averse to activity or exertion, delinquency, apathy, inertia, tardiness or lateness, not being able to be on time, exertion. The next one is sloth. It means unwillingness, belatedness, mental lethargy, a state of comatose, a reluctance to work or make an effort, laziness, negligence, indifference, slumber means to sleep, to be dormant, negligent or inactive due to a lack of motivation, lethargy, lack of energy and enthusiasm, abnormal drowsiness, the quality or state of being lazy, sluggish, indifferent, a state of being drowsy or dull, listless, and unenergetic, unusually tired, weary, not alert, inactive through forgetfulness. So sluggishness, sloth, slumber, and lethargy are working together when they're coming at us to wear out the saints. But we're told in the Bible, do not grow weary in your well-doing. And Jesus said, come to me all who are weary. So the minute you start to feel weary, what do we do? We come to Jesus. We get in the presence of God. Come to me all who are weary and heavy laden. And I will what? Give you rest. Rest. So you're not striving in your own abilities and your own strength. The next one is idleness. This is also, you can see the how it's linked. You can see how they're related. You can see how they work together. Idleness is laziness. It's a state of inaction or inactivity. A state of being lazy, not willing to work, a lack of motion or energy. So if you're feeling a lack of motivation, it could be that you're being attacked with either a spirit of idleness or a curse of idleness. And if you give in to that spirit, that's why you continue to feel the way that you feel. But I'm going to tell you how we can fight these, these things when they come upon us. The next one is apathy. I want to clarify something before I give you the definition of apathy. In my experience, um, just recently, the Lord has been really helping me to understand why it's so important for us to have the Holy Spirit check our heart daily. We want, we want God to check our heart daily and let us know what's in there. Because if bitterness sits in your heart too long, apathy will follow. This is what apathy means. Absence of feeling. Lack of interest. Nonchalant, a lack of feeling, emotion, interest, or concern, a state of indifference, the suppression of emotions. Apathy is the reason why many people in the body right now are singing the same tune, which is, I used to be on fire for God. I used to get excited during worship in the church, but now I'm not feeling like I used to. And when I get in my Bible, it's not really speaking to me like, like it used to. I don't feel the presence of God like I used to. A lot of times this is because we have become apathetic 
to the things of God indifferent. It's a lack of interest, a lack of feeling, a lack of emotion, a lack of concern. The next word is deprivation. It means the state of being deprived, absence, shortage, lack, loss, poverty, deficiency, denial, dispossession, withholding, being prevented from having something you want or need, distress, loss, removal, disadvantage, detriment, destitution, and hardship. These are the things that are being spoken over us. These are the spirits that are being sent to disturb the people in the body of Christ. But again, we have the victory in Jesus' name. And if you firmly believe God's word and everything it says, he says he will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. It says that if you ask your father in heaven for bread, he's not going to give you a stone. It is our lack of faith in God that gets in the way of him moving on our behalf as well. The next one is poverty. A state or condition in which a person lacks the financial resources and essentials for a minimum standard of living. After that is vexation. Now the Bible talks about vexation and that it causes physical pain. Vexation causes physical pain. Let's talk about what vexation is. It's the state of being annoyed, frustrated, worried, the state of being irritated, displeasure, dissatisfaction, agitation, difficulty, exasperation. So anytime you start to feel physical pain, there's a, there's a couple different reasons why you could have it. Number one, you might have unforgiveness. If you're experiencing physical pain in your body, there is some sort of unforgiveness in your heart that needs to be dealt with. And vexation is a form of unforgiveness. A lot of times we're annoyed, we're irritated, we're agitated because of another individual. So that needs to be dealt with, it needs to be laid at the feet of Jesus. And he will take it from you. Another thing that the Lord has been um, having me do during deliverance, and this is really important, if you want to be free of unforgiveness, is start to wholeheartedly pray for the people that have hurt you. If they're not saved, pray for their salvation. If you know things about them personally, mental battles that they struggle with, or sicknesses or disease that they deal with, pray for their healing. Pray for their deliverance and pray until you mean it. That's how you get free. The devil cannot hold you in a chokehold anymore because you're praying for the freedom and deliverance of the people that hurt and harmed you. And that disarms him. The next one is joylessness, sadness, depression. Sorrowfulness, anguish, grief, unhappiness, gloom, feeling dreary, dismal, downcast, miserable, dejected, heavy, low. King David was talking about a downcast soul in the Psalms. And he said this, why are you downcast, O oh, my soul? I command, he started to command his soul. That's biblical. It's biblical. You can command your soul. Your soul belongs to Jesus Christ. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. So if your mind, will, and emotions are exalting themselves against the knowledge of God and everything that he promises you, you can command your soul to rejoice in the Lord. You can command your soul to come up out of that downcast state and bless the Lord at all times like we're commanded to do and let his praise be continually in my mouth. Hallelujah. The next word is forgetfulness. Memory loss. Tending to forget. Likely to forget. Absent-mindedness. Oblivion. Loss of remembrance or recollection. 
inattention, careless omission, needless or neglectful. I'm going to tell you why it's detrimental that we start to come up against these things. If you're forgetful, if you tend to forget things, then when you have divine appointments set up for somebody's deliverance and healing, you just might forget. You just might show up late. And we're supposed to do everything as unto the Lord. When we show up late for appointments, what that's saying is that that other person's time is not valued and doesn't matter. And it does. It it doesn't look good at all. It doesn't look good. When we say, you know, I'm a child of God, we, we need to start reflecting Christ through our day-to-day -day interactions, how we treat people, how we conduct ourselves, how we structure our day. Another thing is that you can't, if, if something, distraction, for example, when a distracted person it's having a conversation. They can't give you their full of t attention, which the devil wants, because then you won't be able to actively listen to another individual. And when people don't feel heard, they get offended. But when you're really listening and you're paying attention and making sure that you understand what they're saying, they feel loved and they, ca they feel cared for. And they're more than likely to continue the conversation. So that's why the enemy is coming at us with these things. Because it would cause all kinds of problems for us in our walk. The next one is discontent. Lack of contentment. Dissatisfaction. A restless desire or craving for something one does not have. It's, kind of, it's borderline covetousness. When we start looking at somebody else's life and desiring the things that they have, the things that they have that we don't and that we've always wanted, we're going to end up in this place and it's an open door for discontent. And discontent is also the feeling of being unhappy with a situation or a circumstance. Instead of embracing it, we should embrace every season that we're in. Isolated or not, wilderness or not. Yeah, I know it's not fun. But let me tell you something. If you're in a wilderness season, you're, this, this is the time where you're going to grow the most in the Lord. So hallelujah for that. Instead of sitting there and thinking, oh, you know, you feel lonely or, or nobody cares about me or everybody, you know, is gone. And all my friends that I thought were my friends are not there anymore. Get out of that place of self-pity and discontent and realize that God has given you time that you can spend with him where you can really press in and find out what the spirit is saying right now because he's removing all those distractions from your life so that you can finally start to hear him. God speaks, right? But sin separates us from God. So he needs to get us in, in these seasons of isolation and it's easy to become dissatisfied discontent in those seasons but you'll if you will embrace them for what they are they can be a blessing that you can't even possibly imagine where you get closer to the lord where you never thought you just never thought it was possible to be that close to him to have that kind of intimate connection with the almighty god who breathed everything into existence with a simple command. He wants to talk to you. The next one is weariness. Weariness is extreme tiredness or fatigue. So come to me all who are weary when you start to get tired, when you start to feel like, I just, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I, I feel depleted. My, my tank is on E. That's when you need to get into the presence of God, not in front of your Netflix for, you know, another session of back-to-back -back episodes so that you can get your mind off how you're feeling. No, that's when we need to get into the secret place. That's when we need to get on our knees. That's when we need to start praying and ushering the, in the presence of God. Worship him. God inhabits the praises of his people. So I don't know what your what your prayer posture is, but when you're feeling weary, the first thing that you do, you get in his presence, you thank God for everything. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. 
And after that, it says, enter his courts with praise. So before I get into talking to God, before I start throwing my petitions and my requests at him, the first thing I want to do is thank him for everything that I can possibly think of. And then praise him for all that he is and all that he has done. Praise. God inhabits the praises of his people. So you're ushering in his presence. Now you can take your weariness to him, that extreme tiredness or fatigue, the state of being bored with something because you have experienced too much of it. Weariness is the state of being physically or mentally exhausted. But my Bible says that his power is made perfect in weakness. So wouldn't that be the ideal time for you to seek the Lord with your whole heart? And the Bible says that if you seek him with your whole heart, you will find him. Depletion of energy, a lack of interest or excitement. The Lord can restore your soul. He promises to restore your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. But you have to spend time with him. You have to seek and search for him. Talk to him about everything. Prayer isn't just petitions and requests it's also just sitting there and soaking up his presence thanking him for everything praising him talking to him telling him how much he is appreciated and loved thanking him for whatever healing that you've received whatever deliverance you've received for the doors that he has opened that no man can shut for the ways that he has made for you where you saw no way. The next word is indecisiveness. It's being unable to decide, conclude, or resolve something. Prone to indecision. Lacking firmness of purpose. The state of being unable to make a choice. Hesitation. Apprehension. Restraint. A lot of times when we're indecisive or we're restrained from doing something or having a hard time making a choice, we need to take it to God to make sure that we know what his will is. The Lord will let you know what his will is if you seek him for his will. The Father wants you to be walking in his will. So he's not going to turn you away when you start to seek out what that is. He will start to speak to you through his word first. And he can speak to you through other people. He can speak to you through books. He can speak to you through music and road signs. The Lord has a plethora of resources that he can use to communicate with his children. The next one is chaos. Chaos is complete disorder and confusion. And how many of us know that God is a God of order? Chaos is a lack of order. Chaos is a total lack of organization. Something that we need. We need to have it as a disciple of Christ. So if you're wondering, okay, so now that I have all this information, what do I do with it? The first thing you want to do is renounce these things, especially if you came in agreement with them knowingly or unknowingly I renounce them that means I disallow this I don't accept it I don't agree with it this will not be my lot and my portion in the name of Jesus Christ then if it's a curse you can say this every curse spoken over my life pertaining to these things be broken now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ be broken every assignment of the devil be nullified out of my mouth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ every assignment of hell is canceled right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ return to sender return to sender now some people might say well no you don't want to do that well, yes, you, you do want to you do want to do that. You know why? Because you can return it to sender with this message. And I'd love to add this in because it's so important that if there's going to be witches and warlocks and high priests and priestess that want to speak curses over my life, I want to make sure when they find out 
that my God is greater than their God. That the next thing that I say is when they find out that their plans have failed miserably and the dealings of the Lord come upon them because he came up because he or she came up against God's anointed. I also pray for their salvation. I say, Lord, make a believer out of them today. Lord, take the scales off their eyes. Lord, remove the, the veil from foolish and darkened hearts. Lord, take them off the broad road and put them on the narrow one. Let them know why you are God and there is no other. Let them know that you are the one true living God. Show them heaven and hell. Show them where they will end up if they do not repent immediately. And that's how we need to be. We, we need to be vigilant. So pay attention to how am I feeling? Okay, I'm abnormally tired. This isn't normal, right? Especially if you got eight hours of sleep or close to that. It's not normal to be abnormally tired. And you know it's a spiritual attack. You know it's a spiritual attack. And if something is, you know, if you're having all kinds of mind battles, well, the Bible says God didn't give you a spirit of fear. He gave you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So command your thoughts to come into alignment with what God says about you in Jesus' mighty name. You're his property now. If you have put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and you have made him not just Savior but Lord of your life, then you can command because you're blood-bought, your mind to come into alignment with what God says about you. You can command your soul to raise up out of that downcast, hopeless place of despair and anguish and sadness and depression and say not here not now not ever in Jesus name you have to go I hope this bless somebody today I'm gonna let you guys go I hope everybody is doing well um, but but if you're not if you're experiencing any kind of battles um, if you need prayer please let me know um, I'm still going through the comments trying to catch up with everybody but Please know, okay, I'm only one person, but I love and care for each and every one of you. And even, even if it takes me weeks, I'm going to go through and I'm going to uh, respond to all of the prayer requests. Um, I also do one-on-one, um, -on -one, you know, counseling with people sometimes if I have the time or deliverance. If you're serious about, you know, getting out of that, that lifestyle of willful sin or you know, getting out of a relationship that God told you to let go of and you want to be free of that soul tie that's, that's, that's got you hanging on to something you know is no good for you, reach out to me, please. My email is my first initial A, my last name, Ambrose, A-M-B-R-O-S-E 2010 at gmail.com. God bless you all and I love you. Bye.